Greta Garbo, known as the first lady of the screen, dazzles audiences with her seemingly effortless acting ability. New York Times. In the 1920s and 1930s, she dominated the American film industry. She rarely speaks to the press or appears in front of cameras except when filming. Because of her private lifestyle, she was given the title Sphinx by the New York Times. For more than five decades, she played cat and mouse with the press about the truth about her life. Fortunately, there are a few credible accounts that describe how Garbo's less-than-perfect past life shaped her into the woman she is today. 1. Greta Garbo was born Greta Lovisa Gustafsson via her biography in Stockholm, Sweden with parents Carl and Anna Gustafsson. According to Susan Ware's book, Notable American Women, Greta Garbo was born into a low-class family in Sweden and was once poor and struggling. Her father, Carl Gustafsson, was a lower-class worker. Because of his drinking habits, he became ill frequently and lost his job, New York Times. Anna Gustafsson, her mother, just stayed at home and cared for the children. This has fueled her desire to succeed even more. 2. Barry Paris writes in Garbo that her father's bad health peaked in 1920 and he died. This compelled her to drop out of school in order to take care of her family. To earn money, she worked in a salon and a department store, according to the book Notable American Women. Her acting career is built on her quiet determination in the past. 3. Greta Garbo has wanted to be an actress since she was a teenager. According to Susan Ware and Notable American Women, her childhood friends say she was obsessed with theater from a young age, and she herself mentioned the thrill of watching actors come in and out of the backstage. While working in a department store in 1922, Garbo met famed producer and director Eric Peschler. Garbo called him the next day to introduce herself. She asked Peschler for a role in his film, and it was her first film, Peter the Tramp, from 1922. Garbo's acting career began in 1922 when she enrolled at Sweden's most prestigious acting school, the Royal Dramatic Theatre Academy. She only stayed for a year before dropping out to pursue acting full-time, but she learned the foundations of her art at this school via her biography. 4. Garbo is only concerned with two things, being a well-known movie star who never has to worry about money and being lonely, striving for a perfect average life. Garbo opts to be herself, New York Times. Garbo described herself as a tomboy who enjoyed trudging about in a boy's coat and shoes and ride horseback and watching the sunset over the ocean. Greta Garbo's private life is largely unknown due to her aversion to speaking with the press. 5. Greta Garbo's love of solitude is highlighted in Barry Paris's book, Garbo. Even when I was a tiny girl, I preferred being alone, Garbo says. She even uttered the most memorable line in her career. I want to be alone, via TCM. Garbo's dating life was private, and she never married, via the New York Post. Garbo once had an affair with actor-turned-soldier Gilbert Rowland. 6. Garbo's desire to be alone as an adult had an impact on her friendships. Despite this, she fell in love with herself. New York Times. She regarded her relationships as social obligations and desired only a few in her life. Garbo also chose to spend the majority of her time with people who were less attractive, talented, or powerful than she was because I too was a simple, uneducated person. She wasn't, however, uneducated. Greta Garbo was a gifted actress who had received professional training. 7. Greta Garbo's relationship with Mercedes de Acosta was one that she would cherish throughout her career. The truth about this relationship may never be known but rumors about da Costa's sexuality were rampant at the time. According to the New York Post, da Costa was once referred to as a lesbian rake. Her friendship with da Costa sparked speculation about her sexuality. Whatever her sexual orientation was, Garbo's friendship with da Costa was far surpassed to any acquaintance she had. 8. According to Barry Paris in his book, Garbo, Swedish filmmaker Moritz Stiller met Garbo in 1923 while she was enrolled in acting school, and he knew from the first screen test that he wanted to help her become a star. Stiller derived the name Garbo from the Polish word Vygarbowak, New York Times. It's a term that refers to the process of transforming rough hide into smooth and expensive leather. Stiller did play a role in Garbo's success. 
He taught her the art of the camera, how to act, and how to carry herself in accordance with her public persona. Stiller was also her mentor and her link to Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, MGM, the company that would make her famous. 9. Greta Garbo had difficulty communicating with others. Her desire to be alone was stronger than the desire to live inside her own head. The camera became her best friend who was always watching her. Furthermore, Garbo's shyness was exacerbated by the language barrier. English, the language of MGM employees and American interviewers, was not her first language. MGM was not pleased with her thick Swedish accent via her biography. 10. Louis Mayer is the starting point for Greta Garbo's MGM career. In 1924, Mayer met Moritz Stiller and Greta Garbo, who persuaded him to attend a private screening of a film in which she appeared. Mayer was smitten with Greta Garbo from the moment he saw her on screen, remarking that it was her eyes that sealed the deal. Louis Mayer was ecstatic and immediately signed Greta Garbo to MGM. This was a watershed moment in her career and the steps that would transform her into a star.